state of Texas is a generous community. The Indo-American community is a generous community in Houston, in the state of Texas, and across the nation. As a member of the United States Congress who has been to the region many times, I feel like we are neighbors. When our neighbors are hurting, we are hurting. I did not want to go back to Washington without an opportunity to join some of our local Indo-American leaders to be able to give Houstonians the opportunity to join in the efforts that have already been started. These numbers are probably still growing, but we see what our friends in India are being challenged. We know what COVID-19 did to the United States for almost two years. We know loved ones that were lost. We know challenges that we faced. And so, as COVID makes its ugly journey around the world and finds a home in India, we in Houston, we in Texas, are standing up and saying that we will beat COVID-19 in India. We will beat it. We know the numbers are stark, and we know the people are in need. 350,000 new infections and nearly 3,000 deaths a day. Yesterday was 3,700 deaths. The New York, Daily, uh, New York Times, India set the world record for daily new cases because it is a very large nation. 401,993, and these numbers change. The number of COVID deaths is over 200,000, and only 2% of India's 940 million adult population have yet to be vaccinated. That is something the world can help India with. We must push vaccines to India and push it now. According to the University of Oxford Project, our world in data compared to this vaccine rate is compared to the United States, which is still working to get fully vaccinated of 31.8%. So we in the United States Congress and with the Biden and Harris administration have made a commitment to ensure that we work with the hospitals, that we answer the call for medical oxygen, and that we realize that good-hearted Indo-Americans here in the United States, like where we're standing today, United Memorial Medical Center is and will be part of the solution. I'm delighted to be here as part of the solution with United Medical Memorial Medical Center in their effort to do this right. And you can see, you can see that what is right is to be able to provide ventilators and oxygen. And as you look back, you can see uh, these cartons that will be shipped immediately over to Indian. But let me show you what we need more of. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. And in that oxygen, the ventilators that are going are going to be helpful to save lives. We want these families to have their loved one back. We want to make sure uh, that we are part of getting their loved ones back. So I'm delighted to be here, first of all, with Saeed Mohaden, uh, who is the president and CEO of United Memorial Medical Center, with his team who said we wanted, as part of the Indo-American community, all of these doctors, he wanted to be a visionary of help. He wanted to be someone who would provide a medical team, expansive medical team, under the protocols of the nation of India to be able to go and to provide extra help. He wanted to take doctors and nurses. And so today we launch an effort to continue to send ventilators over to India, and we launch the effort for the massive medical teams in the Indo-American community, heavily in Houston, Texas, Mr. Council General, to be part of our effort 
we have many other teams that are here as well. And we're excited that uh, the leadership from other teams are here. We're very grateful to them. You will meet those other teams, but we're hosted today by Saeed, whose heart is bigger than one can imagine. And he is prepared uh, to take the lead on a large portion of this product and a major medical team. We have fought COVID-19. There are COVID-19 patients right here today in this hospital. We have vaccinated people on these grounds. We have tested them on these grounds. And if I might say so, the very first widespread testing site, Council General, was here on this parking lot on March 19, 2020, when most people were wondering what is COVID-19? And we told people to come, don't sign up, don't make an appointment, come and get tested. I remember it vividly. People lined up all the way to the woodlands. Some one person or two had to be immediately taken out of their car and taken in to the hospital right at that moment because at that time, people didn't understand symptoms and they were arriving with symptoms. We've been in this for a long time. It really touches my heart that even in the United States, we've lost over 500 million people. So we understand what the fight is about COVID-19. And I did not want our voice not to be heard, our presence not to be heard in India, along with the broader Indi Indo-American community. And we have others that I'm going to want to be part of this effort. Uh, Seema is uh, almost an ambassador herself. And uh, Saeed, I'm going to put her to work. And however you may need her, uh, she's going to be put to work on the effort that you're doing. So I don't want to uh, take a moment more before I ask you to come forward. As I said, your heart is big. The work is long. You have vision. And we're going to make sure that vision is translated into saving lives in India. Saeed Mohin. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I was talking without it. A good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Congresswoman. And thank you, Council General, and the community leaders for joining us in this fight against uh, COVID in India. As you might all seeing the TV and uh, watching the, this disastrous disease raging through India and causing lives. So as Indo-Americans, we cannot just sit back and watch. We have to do something. On behalf of UMMC and our team, we have taken the initiative to start sending the most needed items to India, which is oxygen tanks and home oxygen oxygenator concentrators. Uh, we managed to ship so far 800 uh, units via ship and we are seeing by air another 400 leaving today. Oh, come on. And we, and we are we are sending five 5,000 oxygen cylinders via ship from China directly to India. We're seeking all the help we can get and we're seeking the guidance from the consulate office and to go further. So having said that, I will have Dr. Varon and next who would like to speak on behalf of UMC and give more information on medical mission, the 70 bed ICU unit we're trying to start by mid-May. So I'll ask Congresswoman to introduce Dr. Varone and further. Thank you, Congresswoman. Yeah. Having been to India many, many times and walked some of its most beautiful sites, I know uh, that the people of India are resilient. I remember Council General going uh, right after the explosion at the Taj Mahal the first congressional delegation to go to show the world that we were standing united. So many cities that I have traveled in India and know the people's resilience, but I know they're hurting now. And what they need are these wonderful doctors who are standing here. 
they have helped us so much during COVID-19. They have been our chief healers uh, all over this state and this region and this nation. One of those who has not ceased in his continued service and has gone to places beyond these uh, boundaries and has captured the idea of time such that it does not exist anymore. There are no 24-hour days, they're just continuing days. And I have confidence that if with the protocols of India and the appro appropriate procedures in place, we will have one of the most outstanding medical teams coming right here from the 18th Congressional District and Houston uh, from UMMC led by uh, Dr. Joseph Verone. Dr. Joseph Verone. Congresswoman, Council General, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. About four weeks ago, uh, while we were looking at what's going on in the world, we saw that India was starting to have problems. And, you know, when you see that a country is starting to go down, and when you start to see that the population in India only has 2.5% of, uh, of uh, vaccination, you know that they were going to get in trouble. So who do we go to and who do we talk to? The only woman that I have uh, worked with for 412 consecutive days with, without a single day off, we've been working on this. Mr. Syed Mohidin and I, we sat down and we started to brainstorm, how can we help the country of India? I mean, it's a huge country. Clearly, we won't make a dent, but we need to come up with a plan to help. So the first thing, just as it was said, is let's go ahead and provide uh, things that they need, oxygen. And just to reiterate what Mr. Mohidin has just said, is we have sent a lot of personal protective equipment. We have sent thousands of masks. We have sent medications that are known to be life-saving in this illness. 800 oxygen concentrators are on route from China to India directly. directly. 5,000 oxygen tanks are uh, in route as well. Over here, you will see that there are 400 oxygen concentrators, and today they are going to be placed on, on a plane, and they're going to go via the air. But I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the medical mission, the medical aspects of this. So we've been able to discuss with, uh, with a hospital in India to adapt uh, 70 beds into ICU beds, 70 beds of a, of a local hospital, working with the local uh, doctors, uh, fully uh, uh, equipped, and we are sending the equipment. And not only that, we are getting highly motivated, highly trained, and extremely bright voluntary personnel doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists that are going to come. So we're going to be having these people uh, there. But not only that, we're actually deploying the Global Mercy Ship. Global Mercy Ship, which is a, the, the, is, is a civilian, the largest civilian hospital ship uh, known to mankind, 200 uh, beds, 16 ICUs, four operating rooms. Our goal is to deploy it to the east uh, part of uh, India and to be able to staff it uh, 24 hours a day with highly trained staff. Uh, all of this, obviously, as you will know, has been sponsored by UMMC, by Mr. Mojeda. Uh, in Spanish? In Español. Estamos aquí hoy para hablar un poquito de, de lo que estamos haciendo como un esfuerzo para ayudar a la gente de India. Hemos mandado... 5,000 tanques de oxígeno, 400 uh, concentradores se van a ir hoy por aire, 800 concentradores ya se han ido. Pero aparte de esto, vamos a abrir 70 camas de terapia intensiva en, eh, en la India. Además de esto, vamos a poner un, un barco, un barco hospital con 200 camas, 16 camas de terapia intensiva y 4 eh, salas de operaciones. Todo esto ha sido posible a través de la ayuda del hospital UMMC, específicamente el señor Saeed Mojide. Gracias. Thank you so very much. Uh, before I introduce the Council General, I think it is extremely important uh, to bring Mr. Desai, uh, who is here with one of the outstanding uh, charities 
uh, that are working at the Indo-American community that has made a great leap of service to the people that are in need in India and who is not stopping. And once he speaks, I then want to uh, provide you with how you can help him further, but he has had an international and national impact on helping the people of India. We welcome you and thank you for your service. Thank you, Congresswoman, for the eloquent introduction. Namaste, good afternoon, Congresswoman, Honorable Consul General, UMC staff, doctors and officers. Thank you very much for this opportunity this afternoon. Uh, Seva International is an international organization that operates throughout the United States. We have a big chapter in Houston. Seva is a Sanskrit word meaning selfless service. Uh, we have been serving in Houston since uh, 2005. Uh, recently, Houston Mayor Honorable Turner uh, honored us with the Seva International Day on April 13th. So we are very grateful for opportunity that Houston provides us to serve the local community, national community, as well as the international community. In this event uh, that's catastrophically unfolding in India, Seva International has immediately um, come together with our volunteer force and we've been raising funds through face our Facebook page, facebook.com, uh, Seva International USA, and sevausa.org, uh, through which uh, we have thus far uh, raised more than $10 million, and we are buying life-saving equipment that has been very much needed in India. We are in constant conversation and contacts with officers in India on the ground. We have about 1,000 plus volunteers serving in India right now. We have launched uh, COVID Seva US, uh, covidseva.com in India uh, with our 200 volunteers. They provide real-time services of information about uh, where the ambulances are available, where the empty beds are in which hospitals, uh, which medical uh, establishment is welcoming right now because there's a lot of rush going on in India. So also we are distributing uh, food packages and kits where need is required. Uh, we are very thankful to UPS Foundation, Air India and other in corporate of America who are helping us uh, without charging anything to move our shipments from Atlanta to New Delhi. And from New, New Delhi it will go to seven centers across India by Air India free of charge. From that our volunteers will carry to 22 cities. And from those 22 major centers across India it will be distributed where our partners uh, decide there's a committee that decides where this need is immediately uh, based on the authorities' directions. So I would request everyone to support Seva International. Uh, corporate America is supporting us. Communities across the country are supporting us from all walks of life. So we are very grateful for this opportunity of service that is given to us uh, in the United States and in Houston especially. So with that, I will now give back to you. Thank you. Let me repeat, it is S-E-W-A International. If you want to be able to help, please call 281-300, and that is 7346. 281-300-7346. If you are in the Houston region and you want to be able to help, please call SEWA International, SEWA International, 281-300-7346. And as well, the India Consulate Office, 832-236-6279. 832-236-6279. I indicated that we are in need of a number of items that I'd like to repeat. Then I'm going to ask uh, the Council General who is representing uh, the people of India uh, to come forward at this time. Again, thank you, Dr. Varone. We know that that process uh, can be facilitated through the Council General's Office uh, to make sure that you have all of the protocols mm -hmm. and the appropriate process that needs to be. But I want to speak to Houstonians. We must work at all costs uh, to fight the variants that are now facing India. The presence of COVID-19 is a pandemic, and one might call it a plague. And so we need to provide India 
and to help with PPEs and ventilators, medical expertise, and vaccines. I am certainly uh, comforted by the fact uh, that the U.S. NS Comfort uh, has been dispatched to India uh, from Norfolk and may be en route or has arrived to provide surge testing for variants from Indian patients to track the variants. Um, we are also hopefully helping to provide supplies in the hardest hit areas and we're working with other organizations, USAID where appropriate, UNICF, UNICEF, the United Nations Agency is providing supplies including oxygen, concentrators, coronavirus test kits, and personal protective equipment to healthcare facilities. We want to thank the Indian Red Cross that's working, Rapid Response, American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, and Hope Foundation, Oxfam India. I think one of the big issues that I hope that we can continue to try to work with, and that is AstraZeneca, is widely used around the world. Uh, it has not been authorized by the FDA, but our hope is that the United States can help with more AstraZeneca being utilized in India. I believe that is certainly one of the efforts that is extremely important, and I will encourage the administration uh, to work on uh, moving AstraZeneca uh, forward to help the people of India. Again, we're facing a calamity. We're facing 3,000 deaths a day and, of course, infections growing. So that's why we're standing here to say Houston is standing by India and standing by the Indo-American community. Representing India here in the United States uh, is the Council General uh, who has joined us in many, many different ways, including helping uh, during our most desperate times with COVID-19, the freeze, and we know that we are in tandem working with our nations in the Southeast Asian area and working with our friends in India. Council General. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Doctor, and uh, all the members of community present here today, the Indo-American community who are present here. At the outset, I wish to thank all of you for the expression of support and solidarity with India to fight this global pandemic. As two vibrant democracies having open and multicultural societies, commonalities in culture and shared values, India and United States are natural partners. Our comprehensive strategic partnership is broad-based with growing engagement, as you know, Congresswoman, in areas like energy, Houston is the energy capital, in defense, security, trade and investment, and growing people-to-people -people contacts. India shares a very strong connect with this part of United States. We have a very vibrant Indo-American uh, community based here who are bridges for us to deepen our multifaceted ties. And this is, uh, again, one of the many initiatives which have been led by the large Indo-American community based in this part of the United States. As uh, Gitesh Ji from Seva International just told you, there are multiple people who are helping us. Well, the thoughts which come to my mind at this time are that, you know, this is... COVID is an unprecedented situation and it is a global challenge. So everybody is going through this. Right now we are going through in India, but, but as uh, the doctors will testify and as the Congresswoman was saying that this was one of the largest testing sites, we had uh, people here, there are cases here in United States as well. So, so what we need to understand is that this is a global pandemic and we need to fight with united efforts and with global solutions. And I'm sure uh, we will be able to prevail over this. We are really grateful to the partnership and all the help that has been extended by United States. In addition to the support at the government level, Congressman, as you know, we have also received immense support from the Indo-American community, which is based all over United States, the U.S. businesses, and moreover, from the people of United States who are standing in solidarity with the people of India, which is deeply appreciated. And I can just mention this, that with the support of all friends like United States who are standing shoulder to shoulder with us in this fight against COVID, we will face this challenge. And I strongly and confidently believe that with God's grace, prevail and emerge much stronger with 
what we have learned and also together. So I thank you again for giving me this opportunity to join you today in this initiative, which is which we deeply appreciate and uh, this expression of support and solidarity is truly, truly appreciated, Congresswoman Nanad. And I, as you also mentioned, we have been on many other food distribution drives which you have been leading from the forefront, including during the recent uh, freeze in Texas and on many other uh, Indo-American community initiatives since last year. And uh, we are also proud of the fact that the Indo-American community which is based here is also supporting their own communities, their own towns, their own states and that is the way forward, that supporting each other, showing solidarity and understanding that this is a global challenge which will have to be dealt globally and not just, uh, you know, it's not about one country or some place, we, we will remain connected that way. Thank you again. Let, let me conclude again. Thank you, Council General, very much. And I want to call off the names of those who are here. I think it is important to have that information uh, and to make sure that uh, our doctors uh, are really um, here uh, working. So um, let me thank uh, again uh, Saeed Mahindin, uh Dr. Agarwal, Dr. Barone, Dr. Kadir, uh, Rahil Khan, uh, Ms. Lawrence, uh, Dr. Palom Pandu, Pandu uh, Mr. Patel, Dr. Patel, Dr. Shakir Yudin, um, Council General, uh, let me thank uh, Collaborating Voices, Dr. Kathy Tatum, uh, Busy Bee Wellness Center, Azif Youssef, and Medical Bridges, Claudette Farrell. Um, we are a diverse community uh, and um, we welcome all of your support. Again, uh, let me uh, be uh, helpful with this number, the council office, 832-236-6279. Um, these are life-saving in India, life-saving. Uh, and oxygen is life-saving. So if I might remind you again, these are two patients side by side, two side by side. Bed space is longing and there are families who have faced what we have faced but can welcome the medical teams with the Indian protocols and permission to be able to come. Dr. Verone, thank you for the vision with Saeed. Uh, thank you for not ceasing. Thank you for recognizing uh, the devastation. Again, to Houstonians, we have always stood up when someone has called. And so I wanna make sure that you are standing up now and that you are providing what is needed. And I say it again, PPEs, ventilators, oxygen, medical expertise, and vaccines. I am grateful to the Biden-Harris administration for dispatching the United States Naval Ship Comfort and as well uh, US um, AID uh, and the United Nations UNICEF, the Indian Red Cross, which is working, American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, Hope Foundation, Oxfam India, and as Siwa has said, Indo-Americans from around the nation but we want Houston to be on the map. And so I've given you the numbers. If you feel compelled to provide uh, help, please call the Council General's Office, 832-236-6279, and Siwa International, 281-300-7346. We're going to be a partner in fighting and beating COVID-19 in India. Thank you to UMMC. Thank you to Saeed and the team. Let's give them an applause, please. All the doctors, nurses, medical professional staff. Thank you very much for stepping up and making a difference. And all the doctors who are standing with me here today, you are known as the healers. And we are grateful that your heart is strong and ready to serve even beyond the boundaries of 
the United States. I want to finish with this. We have not completely comprehended the movement of COVID-19. And the reason why I say that uh, is because this disease, this virus, makes its own way. As Council General, even in the United States, we have continuing hotspots. And we must continue to fight and make sure that we are socially distanced, wearing our masks, but getting vaccinated. And so I cannot leave without saying to those of you who are not vaccinated, I want to make sure that you see us. We're vaccinated. We're being safe, but we are also saving lives. And so until we completely have mass vaccination, you'll see us wearing masks. It doesn't mean the vaccination is not powerful, not meaningful, not important. And it doesn't mean that we won't tell you and your loved ones to get vaccinated. But we're hoping soon that Pfizer will in fact uh, provide uh, a review that will allow us to give it to younger children and younger children and other vaccines as well. So my plea is ask someone who's been vaccinated if you are uncomfortable about being vaccinated. We are here to serve and to help you. And so I would love to be able to say that we have really vaccinated across this country. Remember what our president wants to do, to get us to be vaccinated and vaccinated and vaccinated. Do I... Um, so um, let me... Okay. Okay. We can do it separately if you want. If you so. Oh, yeah. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. I want five minutes. For you. Mm -hmm. We, we, you know, we really truly appreciate your sentiments and support. Okay. And no, about that I'm talking. Yeah, so we are, since this is... Okay, uh, me, Delhi, we yeah. have, uh, I'm from Delhi Gurdwara Prabandha Committee, we have 200 people batting over there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Mr. Mahayudina has committed... I'll give you, a give you a minute, my friend. Give, is give. the same community yeah. or what? Come, come. Yes. Right. Please, Please, come. come. And I want my, my... Is that tree? With a mask on? No? Yes? I can't tell. Okay. Not, come, come. Somebody, come, come. somebody looks just like him. Yes. It's unbelievable. His twin, right? <laughs> His twin. He needs to stop walking around. <laughs> His twin. Um, we're delighted. Would you please come? Thank you. Thank you. And introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters, honorable congresswoman, our consulate general. I had been in touch with our Delhi Gurdwara Prabandha Committee every day. We have about 200 bedded constant oxygen supply system over there. But the people are coming in such a large quantity that they are going back. I brought this thing to the uh, ears of Mr. Mahayudin and he promised that before the end of this week or maybe latest on Monday, he will have 400 oxygen concentrator delivered there and I'm to also trying to make all the efforts uh, to put in 18, 19 radio stations and have all over for people to come for help and join and save the lives. Thank you very much. Thank you Congresswoman and Concert General, please. So, thank you Congresswoman. Just the last thing which I want to say is that as the consulate we are facilitating as you rightly mentioned and we truly appreciate this but we are only the list of items you have already said, we are here to facilitate if someone reaches out to us. That is what we are doing to connect them to people in India if they so wish to do. So thank you again. He doesn't like to always get the last word, but I'm going to give Saeed the last word. Standing <laughs> alongside of Dr. Varone. Yeah, we're, the, we're the three musketeers. <laughs> we'll stand alongside of each other. Uh, and he will make the last word. Mm -hmm.
provocative. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is the most delightful word I heard today, Congressman, uh, to be joined with you. It's what an honor. Um, since uh, 412 days <laughs> nonstop working with Congresswoman, I just pray to God if I wish I can get energy like hers. Uh, we just op we just get so overwhelmed operating a small hospital system when she is on a day in 24 hours nonstop taking care of these her district and and on and apart from this nationwide problem and international people reach out for help. So it's from bottom of my heart, Congresswoman, I'd like to thank you and for your support, your guidance, and we'd like to make a difference with your help. Thank you. Thank you, Council General, for your presence, and we appreciate it. And most of all, I'd like to thank our UMC's team and all the respected founder doctors of this hospital who has worked here for the last 30 some odd years and laid the stone for this hospital since 1992. I would really appreciate your help and always continuous guidance. Thank you very much. And the only thing I want is for the doctors to wave their hands because you're hiding in the back and I, I just don't want to make sure we see all of you who are in fact um, in the medical arena. And any questions, sir? Okay, you got everything? And I think I, I thank the uh, collaborating team, thank them very much and uh, we will uh, like you to be introduced to the Council General um, in the work that you're doing as well. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. You did a beautiful job. Thank you.